بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم گرلس آئی ایم صدف اشواق ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈلیور یو لیکچر ون آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ سیکنڈ ایئر فزکس فسٹ آف آل وی کم ٹو چیپٹر نمبر ون وٹ از دا آبجیکٹو آف ٹوڈے از لیکچر ان دا اینڈ آف ٹوڈے از لیکچر students you would be able to understand charges state coulomb's law and to explain that force between two point charges is reduced in a medium other than free space using coulomb's law chapter 11 electrostatics this is the name of our chapter we are going to start today first of all we come to the definition What do you mean by electrostatics? What is its definition? It is that branch of physics in which we deal with the charges at rest. Basically, electrostatics is a combination of two words, electro and statics. Electro means electricity, means charges. Statics, when these charges are at rest. Examples. When clouds rub against each other, lightning is produced. Amber attract lightweight particles after rubbing. These are the examples which you observe in your daily life. First of all, before moving towards Coulomb's law, we come to the properties of charge. Definition of charge. An electric charge is an additional and inherent fundamental property of some elementary particle due to which they interact each other. What do you mean by elementary particle? Elementary particle means electrons and protons. Due to this interaction, force is produced, which is known as force of interaction or electric force. What are the types of charges? Basically, there are two types of charges. Positive charge, that is, protons. Negative charge, electrons. SI unit of charge is Coulomb. And we all know that Coulomb is the fundamental quantity. The charge carried by an elementary particle is small e and its magnitude is given by this equation. 1e is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. This is a picture which gives you the position of an electron and proton in an atom. We all know electron is a negatively charged particle. Proton is a positively charged particle. Quantization of charge. It is a process of converting a continuous range of values into a finite range of discrete values. Charge, Q, is an integral multiple of minimum elementary charge, small e, and it is related by an equation which is given by Q is equal to N into E, where in this equation, Small n stands for number of charged particles, maybe number of protons or electrons. Q stands for charge and small e stands for charge on elementary particles. Now we come to Coulomb's law. The quantitative measurement of electric force between two charges was first made by a physicist named Charles Augustin D. Coulomb. He used an instrument for measuring very weak forces by their effect upon a system of fine twisted fiber. You can see this torsion balance over here. Even you can see this torsion wire. Now we come to the statement of Coulomb's law. The magnitude of the force 
between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is giving you the theoretical statement of Coulomb's law. What is its mathematical form? Mathematical form of Coulomb's law come from the statement. You can see here in this slide, F is directly proportional to Q1, Q2 over R square. You can see here Q1, Q2 is the product of charge. If these two charges are like charges, either these two are positive or these two are negative because positive positive makes electric force positive negative negative makes electric force again positive and negative negative positive positive that is like charges gives an electric force and what is its nature this is called force of repulsion similarly for unlike charges if Q1 and Q2 are unlike, means one is positive, other is negative. Then positive and negative makes electric force negative. And always remember, this, is, this electric force is known as force of attraction. So this is basically not an equation. It is a statement because it doesn't carry an equality sign. In order to convert this equality sign in this, sorry, this proportionality sign into an equality sign, we have to add a constant. Here we have added a constant. K stands for electric constant, where in this case, K is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. What is epsilon naught? Epsilon naught here is called permittivity of free space. It means, it tells you the medium between the two charges Q1 and Q2. It means where Q1 and Q2 are located. These two are located in space or vacuum. So we rewrite this equation as, by putting the value of K in this equation, we get formula that is F is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r square. Now we come to the vector form, the vector form of Coulomb's law. Here you can notice we have written f12 is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r12 square unit vector r12. Where what do you mean by F12 and R12? F12 is giving you a force exerted by Q2 charge on Q1. Similarly, R12, that is a unit vector. It gives you, R12 is a unit vector pointing from charge Q1 towards Q2. Similarly, here in this equation, we have here in this equation, R12 is a unit vector pointing from charge Q1 towards Q2. This is the equation which is representing a unit vector that is unit vector R12 is equal to vector R12 over its magnitude. Similarly, in this equation, F21 is representing a force, a force exerted by Q1 charge on Q2. And here, this gives you unit vector R21, where unit vector R21 is pointing from charge Q2 towards Q1. Just in the same way as here I told you, this is unit vector 2, 1. It is equal to vector 2, 1 over its magnitude. Here you can see 
we have put a negative sign means these two unit vectors are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction you can see here the coulomb's law formula q1 q2 charges and f12 force f2 <laughs>